Welcome to the 220 Bundung Boy channel. Today, we will be talking about the tragic story of the Batel Lejola, the untold tragedy. In the waters of Senegal's Atlantic coast, just beyond the horizon, lies a graveyard. It is not marked by headstones or memorials, but by the rusting remains of a once proud fairy, the MV Lejola. This is the story of one of the deadliest maritime disasters in the history, a tragedy that claimed the lives of nearly 2,000 people and a haunting legacy it left behind. <laughs> In 2002, the MV Le Jola was the pride of Senegal, a ferry that connected the isolated region of Casamance to the nation's capitals, Dakar. For many, the ferry was more than just a mode of transport. It was a lifeline, a symbol of progress and hope. The journey was meant to take a mere 16 hours. But what happened on the night of September 26th would turn a routine voyage into an unimaginable nightmare. On that fateful night, over 1,900 people crowded onto the ferry, more than double its official capacity. There were families traveling to see loved ones, traders moving their goods, and students eager for the start of a new academic year. As the sun set and Lejola set sail, few could have predicted the disaster that lay ahead. But beneath the surface, danger loomed. The ferry, already overloaded, was navigating a trenches Atlantic route. Made even more perilous by the lack of adequate safety measures and proper maintenance. At 11 p.m., disaster struck. A sudden storm and winds up to 40 knots hit Lejola. The ship, unable to handle the stress of the heavy load, began to tilt dangerously. Panic spread quickly among the passengers as they realized something was terribly wrong. In just a few short minutes, Lejola capsized. Most of the passengers were trapped inside the ferry, and as the cold Atlantic waters flooded the vessel, the cries for help became desperate, echoes against the wind. By morning, the full extent of the tragedy began to unfold. Despite the fact that Lajola had capsized just 20 kilometers off the Gambian coast, rescue operations were delayed by several crucial hours. By the time help arrived, it was too late for most. The sea had already claimed its victims. The final death toll was staggering. Nearly 1,900 people perished that night, more than the Titanic disaster. Only 64 survived, leaving the nation in a state of shock and disbelief. The days following the disaster were filled with grief and anger. Families searched for answers. 
How could this have happened? Why was the ferry allowed to sail so grossly overloaded? And why were the rescue operations so tragically slow? But for many, the answers came too slowly. Investigations revealed systemic failures, poor maintenance, inadequate safety protocols, and a disregard for the ferry's capacity limit. Despite the official inquiries, many felt justice was never truly served. Today, the wreck of La Jolla remains at the bottom of the ocean, a haunting reminder of the lives lost. For many families, the inability to recover the bodies of their loved ones adds another layer of grief. There are no graves to visit and no place to mourn. For those left behind, the tragedy of Lijola is not just a national disaster. It's a personal, ongoing grief. More than two decades later, the story of the sinking remains a painful chapter in Senegal's history. The sinking of Lijola serves as a powerful reminder of the fragility of life and the devastating cost of negligence. Today, maritime safety regulations have tightened, but the memory of the ferries, passengers, their lives, their dreams must never be lost to the deaths. For the families, for the survivors, and for our nation, Lejola is more than a shipwreck. It is a symbol of lives cut short, of justice unfulfilled, and of a tragedy that the world must remember. In 2003, Senegal's courts shelved the Jula case on the grounds that those directly to blame had died in the accident. But the country's president has acknowledged that people higher up the command chain bore some responsibility. The ship had been poorly maintained and was running way above capacity. Today, some families have received compensation, but what they want to see is justice, so they support the French initiative. Senegal's the teen family from the Dakar suburb of Thierroy lost their youngest son in the accident. The 26-year-old was an apprentice magistrate in Ziganshore, Casamance's capital. Le Jola, the untold tragedy, leaves us with a lingering question. Could this tragedy have been avoided? And in remembering, do we hold ourselves accountable for the lives that should never have been lost? If you're still watching, click on this video to see the evolution of the Gambia's music from the 70s to its current state. Please like, subscribe, or leave a comment.
and thanks for watching.